Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a coordinate block, a uh, coordinate uh, leader. So this leader here shows the coordinates of that point. It shows it in decimal feet. It doesn't say that in there, but it is. Um, so that's a difficult one to do, but I created a video on it. It's the first video I did. I was really happy I did because I needed it and forgot how to do it and then couldn't find it on my computer. So I, since I needed to create it again, I found the video that showed the way and it was very much easier. Actually, it was perfectly easy. It was really hard to figure out. In fact, uh, it was really, really hard to figure out. So I'm going to take this is decimal feet, right? So 3,600 units, 300 feet. So in case you're not familiar, let's do this. Let's erase that, delete. You can create, uh, if you're in, uh, go here to drawing utilities and then units, and then you'll see that it's an architectural. So you can, so now you can draw in feet. So I'm gonna do this, we're in red. I'm going to start there and I'm going to type in 300 uh, apostrophe feet comma 200 apostrophe and enter and it'll give you it it'll draw that in feet typically you'll see people will be drawing in inches and then measure it anyways there's different ways to do it on AutoCAD so here we just go uh, what happened here So we got 200 by 300 units, so that's we would just type in the same drawing. You could type it, that's weird. Draw like this, hit zero, comma, zero, and then type in 300, comma, 200, and it'll just give you a 300 by 200 inches, right? So now we want a coordinate, we want a leader that shows the coordinates 300 comma 200, like this, right? Except we're doing the units, that's doing it in feet. This is going to just do it in whatever coordinate you're working on. So I'm going to do that right now. Let's do a create a point format. Let's check the point style first. One absolute units work let's insert that there P -O enter P -O enter all right zoom in L enter uh, 60 degrees and 12 long and 24 horizontal enter and those are lines not a polyline so they're separate all right, so now we're going to create an attribute definition, A-T-T, -T, enter, and we're going to call this ID, or you can just call it anything you want, but I like ID, uh, ID, and then hit OK, place it right there above the thing in the middle, and then do the same thing, attribute definition, C-O-O-R-D, and then right here, C-O-O-R-D, enter. And you're going to place it over here on the left since it's left justified. Enter. OK. And cancel. So that's it. So now we're going to create the block. So type in B. Enter. I'm going to name it Tests Block. And we're going to pick a point. You could probably pick it later, but we're picking it now. We're going to select the objects. We're going to select them in order from right to left. One, two, and three. All right. Hit enter. And that's what we need. And then we'll go to block editor. So now let's give this some parameters. We're going to hit parameters there. Create a point there. Position one. And then let's give it a flip. Flip state. I'm going to move that now. If you don't move that arrow, it won't move properly. It won't move or flip. So it has to be off of that base point. And then uh, go to actions. And then we're going to go to stretch. And we're going to click the position one. 
select it from right to left what we want there and then left click it clicking all three of those so those ones we want to stretch and that that is going to be our locked point right and then uh flip we want to hit the flip state and we're going to select everything and hit enter and then uh Escape. We're gonna right, we're gonna left click on this twice. Open up the attribute definitions. Right click that. Right, get you know, highlight that, and then right click it. Insert field. And we're gonna to go to block placeholder for objects. Block placeholder, position, decimal, and then we want x, y, and however whatever precision you need. And I just don't need the z. And click OK should say insertion point okay and then we're going to go to uh, that's it uh, escape escape right click close block editor save the changes of the test block delete this and then insert i enter and you're going to say test block right there enter hit okay and that'll be the coordinates so let's move that you don't need to just highlight it and then you can try it. You don't need to hit M first. And then we're going to bring it down here. All right. And then hit regen. All right. 200, 300. And then we can scale that. Let's see. Enter. And we'll just do like uh, 12. Enter. So that's how you create that thing, right? And then you could just do, you could do it like this if you just want to go through and do it manually, right? And then you hit regen, and everything will regenerate, okay? So let's get rid of all that. All right, now there's a, I don't know if it, I loaded it already, no ink. The max, so there's no command here. So you're gonna go uh, app load app. -L, there you go, app load enter. <clears throat> and I already loaded the Lisp routine, I already, I'm already in the file. This is Lisp routine, you can get it from Lee Mac. Uh, he's got tons of really great Lisp routines. Just, just click on that, hit load. So as it's been loaded successfully, close it. Now I can type in num ink, enter. And it's called uh, Incremental Numbering Suite version 3.9, LIMAC 2021. Uncheck text follows cursor. Start at one, let's say, increment one. We're gonna increment the prefix. So you could have plus, you could have all kinds of information there for your control. And then we're gonna insert that as a block. We're gonna insert the test block. And uh, attribute is gonna, the attribute that's gonna change its coordinate I'm mean, sorry, test block coordinate attribute. So that is an attribute. The uh, increment is going to do, I don't know, it's going to just leave that co coordinate, I think. Scale is 24. I think that was a little big. I think we wanted 12. That's going to scale that thing we just checked, right? Maybe it was even a little big if that was, let's we'll type it six. I'll hit OK. And then you can come in here and you can start inserting those like that. Oh, I'm incrementing the wrong one, right? Num ink. And then we did everything, that's correct. It needs to be ID, hit okay. Oh, it's not gonna work. Hit enter again. We're gonna start at one again. Test block, block, ID. Okay, it's been a long time since I did this, man. And then we go 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, and 0.4. Mm -hmm. And they're automatically, when you insert them, they're automatically correct, right? <clears throat> you don't have to regenerate them. When they populate from the, the numbering suite, they, the coordinates are correct. If you move them, though, let's say you realize, oh, you hit the wrong spot. And let's say it was over here. All right, you realize it was incorrect. Let's say you move it. You have to hit, you have to type in regen. Imagine if you closed the program and opened it, it'd probably regen. I don't know that, but there you go. That's AutoCAD for you. And, uh,
like I said, that's one that I created a long time ago. That could be created in the numbering suite too. So, no ink. Uh, start at uh, 100. Test ID OK, and then you could put those. You could place that around too. I didn't change the scale, but I didn't change the layer. But that was, uh, that's interesting. Oh, because I didn't change the. <laughs> I didn't change the. I didn't change the insert block. Insert the uh, mink. Um, enter. Start at a hundred. Test block prefix. Test block. We want to go with the ID coordinate. ID. So let's scale that to twenty-four. Actually, maybe let's go to like thirty-six. Hit OK. And then you could have that start populating like that. All right. And those are in decimal feet and they're incremented, you know what I mean? So that's a very nice thing about the uh, the numbering suite. Uh, and that's what that's how you create a block. You could write that block, type in WB, save it somewhere. Then all you gotta do is go and open it. And it'll you can put it in your drawing. I'm not sure I'm going to get into that. That's not too hard. There's plenty, plenty of videos on that. Mm, I didn't see too many videos on this. Well, the nice thing about these uh, here is you can flip them, and you can. Oh, you know what? I missed something, huh? So here, this one, you'll see that you can move it, <clears throat> and then flip it. All right. This one here, you can flip it, but somehow I lost that point. So we went into you know, changing it's a real bear too, right? Let's go to BE, enter, test block, open, and then for some reason, let's go like this. Delete, point, right? action, stretch, hit that. Select that. Select it. Enter. It looks like it's there now. Close the block editor. Save it. Insert. Test block. Enter. OK. There you go. Now you can move it like that. And flip it. I don't know, it's weird, man. Sometimes you, oh, see, now it's not following because I didn't catch it in the flip, right? Control Z, 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 Y. All right, so right here, I have to get rid of the flip state. Put in a parameter point, flip state, and then flip. Check it. Is that good? Yeah. And then select it all. Enter. And then select all. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. Flip action, flip. Select it. I don't know why I'm having trouble now. Action, flip. Oh, that's a position. It's the wrong type of a. Um, type of parameter flip. And then we go to action, flip, flip, and then you gotta select the whole thing. Enter, and then close block editor, and it'll actually work this time, I think. So insert test block. Say okay. And it's interesting. There's probably a way to scale it when you insert it in, in AutoCAD too. But the numbering suite, uh, I always use it. Now it's not going to move. Remember, I told you if you don't move that arrow, it doesn't move. E E Enter. Test block open. We just got to move that. Alright. Post block editor.
pretty easy when you know it exists, right? Let's figure it out, this bitch. Oh, that's it. All right. Not made for kids. Zoom a enter. So there you go. That's what I know about creating some coordinate leaders. And thanks for watching and share this if you have a chance to share this with your, you know, your teammates, your coworkers, and your students. Uh, it saved me a lot of time and energy, especially this where you can take that stuff. You, sometimes you just want to put it right on the drawings. You know, it's not worth putting it into the instruments or. And then you can just okay, that's point one. Doesn't have to be per the the civils or the architecturals or the surveyors. It can just create your own drawing. You can get out there with an instrument. And you can do some down and outs. You can shoot some angles, and you know if you have the coordinates, pretty easy. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put the information in the instrument in a drawing or uh, data. You can just look at the PDF where you added this onto the PDF and set up over a point, you know it's point one, you can set it in the instrument point one, put in the coordinates, backside to a point, whatever point you choose, you could create a new point in the backside to that point, and then, uh, you know, it's very nice, you can just, then you just in, input the, in, the coordinates right off of the drawing, in case your guys are not, uh, you know, there's no, some jobs are just not worth, Go in the tech tech route. Uh, it's a little bit look a little bit more low tech uh, sometimes to just put it in there like that and be able to use it like that. So I hope that helps you in your career and uh, thanks for watching. You know, see you on the next one.